day has come. The day has come. It is finally time to take out my Angraecoids. Well, the little ones are already outside. It's the big ones, the Bossery and this Crestwood Tomorrow Star, who are the main protagonists in this video. So thank you so much for being here. Exciting day for me because first of all, well, you could see from before, she is leaning that way, which is okay because during the winter that was her source of light where the hedge is. And this is actually all the root system that I tried to save throughout the entire winter and it goes all the way down there. But what we need to do is trim these roots because some of them did not make it. Even though I had that little Tupperware of water to amplify the humidity, and sometimes I submerged the roots in that water just so that I could see how long I could maintain my gorgeous, gorgeous root tips. Well, you can see it didn't really work out. So what we need to do here is, first of all, off camera, because I don't want to put alcohol on the root system. I'm just going to sterilize my secateurs with some alcohol, let that evaporate, keep it away from what we're about to do next. I am quite loath to remove my spider family in here. I think I had two, but I have a feeling they've left. It's starting to look tatty and not because I manhandled this orchid pretty much. When this orchid arrived into the grow space for its winter stint, I hadn't moved it at all. All I did was fill the saucer of the orchid top that it's in. And well, now that I've moved it, I have not seen any spiders for a considerable amount of time. And that spider web is looking untidy. If Mr. and Mrs. Spider are still in here, then they will be able to rebuild their home. But it gives us a better idea of what is going on and I am sorry if spider webs or spiders as such is triggering to anybody but I like my spiders in my pots. I don't mind them. Up against the hedge if they want to come back they will have plenty of time and peace to do so because where this orchid is going to be living for the rest of the summer all throughout until possibly end of October depending when night temperatures drop again down to 15 degrees celsius they can re-establish their home. But for now, what I want to do is tidy up the root system. And for that, I need a spider web free appearance. So let's give these a spray. Oh, what a pleasure to be able to do this again. This orchid has only been watered in the saucer and sometimes a little bit of water was poured through the pot. Let's see which roots go dull, brown, stay, let's say, as in maintain their Teflon effect. This gives us a great indicator as to which ones are alive and which ones we can cut off because weaving these roots into the hedge is going to be quite interesting, very time consuming. Let's make our life a little bit easier. So we've got some gorgeous, I don't know, hang on a second, gorgeous roots still alive all the way down here. That's awesome, but we have one that looks very desiccated right here. So let's check that. Yeah, we can peel off the velamen. We can see the steely. Yeah, this one's gone all the way up to where it's branching. So before I go all the way up to where it's branching, I'm gonna cut halfway and see if we have any substance at all. Nope, no substance. But I'm not going to go up to where it's branching, even though I only have a teeny tiny piece left. I'm just going to go up to where the end of the dried out part of the velamen is. That's one. So now we'll check for another one. And I am taking my time about this. Basically, if I were to put this orchid in the hedge and make my life easier, I would chop just the, you know, halfway, give it like a cut. But roots failing of their own accord on angraecoids is not the problem. Cutting the roots, disturbing the roots from us manipulating them and handling them, yeah, that's not such a good idea. And I'm not about to test it or debunk that theory. I'm just gonna go with the fact it's not a good idea. So here we have another root tip that has failed, unfortunately. It's going all the way back to here. And based on what I saw previously, I'm just going to cut it completely off. There we go. All right, that's that one. Oh, I see another one right here. Even though the velamen looks good, it looks very desiccated. 
the root tip has died back. So here it swells again. The velamen has a Teflon effect. So what we're gonna do is just cut back and see if we can't find green tissue. Really hoping what I'm showing you is in focus. Oh no, that's an air bubble. You see that? I was fooled, drat. <laughs> that is an air bubble. That is a desiccated root all the way up to, let me raise it again for those of you who are interested in this process. All the way, by the way, timestamps will be in the description. So all the way up to here, that is firm. Even though, <laughs> let me really qualify that. Everything feels firm, even though it's desiccated and dead. So I won't be fooled by that. But up here, there's also a plumpness to the root. So I'm going to hedge my bet that it's going to be up to here dry. Yeah, it's dry. And the rest may branch. Now, do we have another one? I can see a dead root tip down here, but I wonder if it warrants chopping off. The rest of the root is all alive and already absorbing water, which is great. That means active growth is kicking in. The hormones, the velamen is changing its characteristics and is starting to absorb water, which is awesome. That's a great sign. We are doing really well and we haven't lost the entire root system. Now, you see, the roots on orchids will actually stop growing based on the season, based on the temperature, even if it were steady, steady, gorgeous, agreeable temperature throughout the year. They have their rhythm and their season. So I am not concerned that my root tips stopped growing, even though they looked a little bit like this one right here, which would appear to be a little bit dead, maybe, but it's not. Look at how that velamen is starting to respond. So we'll be very careful with that. Do I want to cut this off? Yeah, while we're at it. This is really desiccated. I don't want to cut into the green with angracoids. You could, but if the root is considered disturbed, it could sulk for five years. So they say, once again, I'm not going to try and debunk that, but I can assure you that if I cut into the green, I'm going to be disturbing the makeup of the root more than if I just cut it to the brown. This way, that part is dead anyway. It won't matter. It, the orchid won't like feel it, so to speak. But yeah, now the thing with my angracoids, they always look a little bit dusty because, you know, I don't touch their leaves a lot and I don't wash their leaves a lot either. I love the glaucous effect of leaves on the angracoids as they grow. The glaucous effect obviously is only as pretty as when a new leaf grows and then it doesn't rain because then that is ruined by dust, sand and rain blotches. But still, um, you can see, no you can't, hang on a second, <laughs> sorry. You can see how dusty the leaves are even though she's been living inside for the, well since beginning of November 2021 and I just don't I don't touch them that's not a point of laziness it's just you know I do like the leaves to maintain that glaucous appearance however that glaucous appearance only counts for new leaves not old leaves so before we put her out into her permanent space She's getting her one leaf clean <laughs> of the summer. And then after that, I don't touch her anymore. And if I cannot reach the health and the texture of my leaves is more important than my need for a visual impact of beauty and cleanliness. I have learned along the way with my orchids that what I perceive beautiful to them might be like, what are you doing? I need that. Dust is also a form of protection from too much light. It can also be a block from getting enough light, especially during the winter. But again, me, the orchid will do what it has to do with what I can give it. And if it doesn't get enough light during the winter, 
then oh well, we're going to make up for it right now because for the next month she is going to be blasted with light. This orchid did not bloom for me during the winter of 21 and 22, which I found surprising. But then again, I had a thought. She didn't bloom for me. Why? She had plenty of light. But what changed from the winter of 2020 to 21 where she did bloom for me and the winter of 21 to 22 and she didn't bloom for me well i went in with a copper treatment preventative measures of fungicide treatment and it didn't rain so some of that poison landed on my root tips and killed the root tips and i thought i had lost the growing points of all my root tips for my angraecoid it was pretty pretty bad but luckily, while all those root tips did die, she started to push out more root tips, branched even more vigorously on the root front and went totally and completely nuts because this root structure right here was not there when I did the copper damage and killed all the root tips. This was not there. This all happened afterwards and then it manifested itself in the hedge. It was a dream come true to see the result of this new root system. So I believe that when we talk about interference of angraecoid roots and then they sulk and they won't bloom for five years, damaging a growing point of a root system could be considered and fall under that category of interference with the roots and it was at that point that i did have to cut into green tissue to get the blackening part off because that blackening part was just spreading and absorbing into the rest of the velamen causing more of the root to die than i was comfortable with cutting into the green tissue then resulted i believe in root shock and for that reason she didn't bloom that is one of my conclusions the other being that she was so focused all summer long last year to produce a new root system there was no time to think about blooms and honestly totally fine by me so what i'm doing now is just you know silly little work trying to get some of the salt off the edge of my orky top it's not going to be a super duper tidy clean job there are roots in the saucer and for that reason, I am not removing the saucer and doing a complete deep clean of my orchid top. But what I can see and what I can reach, I will be wiping off the excess salt. We have ourselves a dead root back here. I'm going to move the camera around and show you. Let's see if we can deal with that. I love angraecoids and I know that this is not exactly the most interesting of videos but for me filming it and talking to you about it i am enjoying it and i'm sorry if this is like what are you doing this is boring but you know maybe a little bit of additional information also will help as i go through prepping my crest wood to move into its summer spot now i'm going to move you and show you that desiccated root right up against the orchid top let's see if i can make this work and check this out just that movement there was already a crack in this root, but I wasn't quite careful and I cracked it even more. So <laughs> putting her in the hedge is going to be, woo, it's going to be interesting. I'm a bit nervous about it, but needs must, needs must. So excited to get this done. Alrighty, let's see if you can see what I see. This one right here. Can you see how desiccated it is right up to here? It looks plump. But then here, it does actually soften and it had grown back into the orchid top right here and then down here branched and went into the saucer. So we'll just pull out what we can. There you go. This one's a goner. Let's go back. Gone, gone. All the way to the branch. Whoa. Whoa. You see? This is what I was trying to avoid. I don't want to be cutting into green. I consider this a disturbance, but let's pretend that we're an animal and we're doing it out in nature. <laughs> Here's another one. Now I can say, why are you doing this? It's not going to come out of the pot, this, that, and the other. Well, if I have anything to go by with the way this orchid grew roots last year, hopefully this network is going to start branching again, and then I will have absolutely no access to something 
as icky as this and that's why I'm doing this now to a certain degree now you see how nasty and gnarled this root looks right here but it is totally active it is totally fine it's probably one of the oldest roots this orchid has and well they start to look a little bit unsightly but there's nothing wrong with it all the roots down here tough as nails we're good to go here even this one looks a little bit discolored right there but it's fine there we have a little bit of a remnant of something so we'll take care of that and i wonder if i can pick out this piece right here if it's going to come willingly if not i leave it let's give it a goo there we go just a little bit there you see all that salt accumulation on the side like i said i'm leaving that if i can't reach it the amount of flushing and spraying this orchid is going to be getting in a couple of months this salt may affect some root tips, but not many. This is all salt that has leached over the winter out through the pot. I hardly, hardly fertilize this orchid throughout the winter. When we get to the hedge, I will show you exactly what growth she put on through the winter despite limited light and very, very limited fertilizer. So what's leaching here now is pretty much the flush of all these months of just putting water plain ro water into the saucer turn her a little bit more because now despite doing what i'm doing here i'm also checking for pests because that's the next thing we're going to do is pest prevention you see that also you will see desiccated roots right here going into the pot i am not touching those chances are that up here this root is desiccated but in the pot it's viable so I'm not going to be fooled by thinking the entire root is dead I'm leaving it same with this one I could tug it a little bit there's a bit of give if I insisted I could pull it out but what if it's viable in the pot there's no harm no foul just to leave it as our orchids age they will start to take on a certain different characteristic gnarly old you know and all that good stuff that we actually don't really want to see but it's all part and parcel of growing an orchid and for me i just find that the older an orchid gets and the more it shows its age it's like an elephant you know more wrinkles doesn't look as cute anymore but it's like it's been with you for decades and it shows on the orchid i love that okay let me take you up a notch here and show you where a root tip had to be cut off because whoops sorry about that sorry sorry had to be cut off because it died back because of the copper treatment so this one never branched it was a gorgeous green lush root tip, and yeah i messed it up but she forgave me so now what we're going to do is try and thread all the long roots right there back into the hedge because this here is actually facing the facade Wish me luck, there won't be much talking coming up. So far so good. So far so good. I don't like how low this one's gonna go. Nope, reverse. Very, very carefully, but reverse. We're gonna put that root, of course, it's the longest one. We're gonna put it up a notch. Just raise it up a bit. There we go. checking about that kink it's an older one still I've got a little bit stressed and now these branches right here are doing their own thing got to be careful I don't like that like I said if this had worked the first time I would have been very very surprised don't like how these branches have pressure on the joints as I move the orchid in so they're gonna have to come in a bit 
and join the rest of that root to a degree. Not even the same mesh, just has to be a little bit more, not so much stress on that joint, if, it, if that makes sense. Also making sure I've got the leaves on my shoulder up here. <laughs> I don't want to break those, kink them in any way. Let me tell you, at the end of this season, pulling her out is easier than getting her into position. There's stress coming right here. So King is not helping. I think, okay, take your time. I think though, we have every root except that one branch, but I think I can, oh no. Okay, hang on a second. Okay, hang on a second. I'm right up against the fence with these branches. Is the orchid in position though? <laughs> oh, baby, let me check from the side. From here, it looks okay. I don't see any stress points. The branching I'm concerned about, or was concerned about, is down here. You see those two? But I don't have any stress on them. So I think that they can actually stay like that. I'm just going to have to maybe put a little bit of a tie, something red around it, to just have a visual reminder for eventualities if something were to happen and I need to pull her out or something. A visual reminder. Let's have a look-see at her now. Sorry for the heavy breathing. Okay, now you can see how she's leaning facing us. And that was, of course, the opposite direction to when she was inside for the winter. This is also the main source of light. So her light source hasn't changed. This will not stress the orchid out when it comes to having to redirect her leaves to reach the ideal optimal light source as they do. Basically, nothing's changed except that she's outside. You see how much dust this orchid got? while she was indoors even that sahara dust is on there now i'm very tempted to support her up against the hedge with a velcro tie that i got from trisha's orchid life but first of all let's get out the bossery and then see how we do the bossery is much much more easy famous last words there we go you can also see the lean of the bossery. She was also the same position as she was indoors and she's got the lean towards the light source. The lean itself is natural when these orchids get bigger. It's not because she was reaching for the light or else my leaf joints here would be much, much wider. So having dropped the fertilizer level throughout the winter, matching it with the light source, I don't have her reaching and bolting out of her structure. So this is all normal because the orchid is aging. I can also start to train her a little bit so that she doesn't get too much of a lean-to throughout this summer. But first of all, let's have a look at them from the front. See what I mean about that beautiful glaucus effect? Only on the new leaves, and if I were to wipe this leaf, I would lose that effect. I absolutely love it. You can see I brushed against it with my thumb. Must have done some damage a while ago. I don't know, putting orchids back during the winter may have bumped that leaf as it was growing. But all in all, we made it through the winter. Don't they look amazing? Oh, you know something? I say that with all of my orchids. I mean, we buy our orchids for a reason. We want to grow specific genera for a reason. But these and Grecoids, these big ones, well, mine are still puny compared to what I saw in Kenya. But these big ones, I just hope that if life ever, ever throws a wrench into my spokes again and I have to give up my collection for a third time, that I will find space and the chance to grow these, including my Rapiculus Lelias, because I just love them. I'm just here, you know, I could just chill and just observe. Okay, let me get some of that Velcro tie. I don't know if you're enjoying this video. Let me know in the comments because I'm just babbling on, expressing my thoughts as I go about bringing my Angraecoids out. And this is such a big day for me. It means so much to me to see Angraecoids outdoors where they belong. It's like having an animal in a zoo. It's, oh, it's just not right. No matter how you try to keep the environment right, there's something majestic about Angraecoids outdoors. I'm so thankful these guys survived. I cannot tell you how thankful I am. 
the cold, cold spring, the dark spring as well. Oh, they don't like it one bit, and yet they made it. I'm just grateful they're alive. And let the misting begin. Oh, still early enough in the day, early afternoon. It's very muggy out here today, but I do want to give them their first summer mist oh, after being cooped up. So you can see I've supported them a little bit with that horticultural Velcro, just to make 100% sure that because of their weight and toppling over, if wind were to come, that they won't be taken out by the wind and fall over. This was not necessary last year but if this is something i have to do from here on in then so be it i may need to change how i'm going to go about this one but for now no wind is forecast and then what i want to do is take the jet and just spray off the gunk from the outside you can see that some moss has died understandably when you saw how much salt had accumulated i'm just going to spray all that and then I'm coming in with a jug of water to flush out the saucer from all the salt I may be flushing into the saucer. So it's a complete, it's a complete little once over, so to speak, right at the beginning and then that'll be it. We're not done yet. <laughs> But you saw how that heavy, heavy flush took out all the gunk that was at the base. So that's what I do every once in a while during the season as well. It's really flush in heavily. I know it appears to be a waste of RO water, but these are precious to me. They really, really are. There's more to these orchids than just angraecoids. We're not done yet. <laughs> I don't consider spiders a pest. So these have been pest free throughout the entire winter. I'm gonna give them a misting of garlic alcohol, a little barrier, a little bit of protection, set them up for success. It is an overcast day, no problem there, not concerned. We have flushed the roots and this one did have some mealybugs right here. That was at the beginning of winter and they were eradicated, but they left their little secret traces behind. It's also gonna get a little bit of protection. This little cakey down here, don't know if that's obvious in the camera, it had scale last year. Well, the scale tried, let's put it that way. Bit of garlic alcohol, never saw the scale come back. So we'll give it a little bit of some today as well. Awesome, awesome. One more thing. <laughs> let's just miss the roots one more time. Just because maybe more garlic alcohol fell on one part of the velamen as opposed to the other. And just to be on the safe side. Oh, you guys, look at that breeze touching their leaves. Fresh air. My goodness. Wow. I'm so happy. I can't tell you in all this time you've been askew. You can see how I'm concentrating on what I have to do because I can really get ahead of myself when it comes to these guys rushing things and I don't know what. I have to make a real conscious effort to slow down, take my time and implement all the steps. So if you're still here, thank you very much. During my winter, Tomorrow Star extended this leaf, started growing this leaf and is almost fully, well, fully matured in a sense for what the winter could give it and started this leaf. That is not too shabby, I would say, for very, very low light levels and hardly any fertilizer. I'm really pleased with its progress throughout the winter. The keiki down there didn't do much progress. I mean, you know, baby orchids are a little bit slower. I get that. It's alive. That is important. There was no rot, no cold damage, no dieback. The bossery as well. Here were the mealybugs. That was the leaf when I brought the leaf in. Mealybugs before I brought her in took care of those, but they left their mark. I hope that is visible on camera. And then you can see the growth of the leaf here, extended quite nicely, a few kinks, Hakuna Matata. And then it started growing this leaf, this leaf, and another leaf in the middle as well. I am, I am so relieved. They fared well. 
I feel I can breathe now. <laughs> Probably breathing too heavily into the microphone, but it's all part and parcel of how anxious I was for these orchids to make it. Some of my other orchids probably won't make what had happened this winter. I didn't need to lose these. These are precious to me. And isn't it just the cutest thing? Look at the vine in the background. No, my Crestwood has got little vine of hearts. It's like his thought is going, I'm loving this. Thank you for putting me outside. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like a heart bubble leaving his growing point. I love it. Oh, you guys, I'm so happy I got this done. So happy. We are four weeks behind schedule in getting these two Angraecoids out compared to last year. The days were nice and warm-ish. The nights did not match the season at all. So, <sighs> I really appreciate it if you join me for the entirety of this video. Thank you so very, very much. Oh, I, I think I need a gin tonic. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm, I'm actually getting emotional. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm seriously tearing up. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Take care. Bye.